inverse functions. But before this, we're going to look at the normal function first. So let's say we have a B function here. This function is going to help us to identify what is the jersey number of a basketball player. So let's say now we are going to input Kobe Bryant's name into these functions. After this function process, they will give us the jersey number of Kobe Bryant. So what happened here is, if we have inverse functions, everything is going to be reverse. So instead of input the name of the basketball player, so now we just need to input the jersey number of a basketball player. This inverse function is going to process it and tell us that who is the basketball player. So inverse function just reverse everything that we did just now and tell us that what is the original thing. So let us see at a arrow diagram here. So same thing, we have the b as our function here and we have the domain, but now we have a few choices here. We have either Kobe Bryant or Stephen Curry. And this function is going to tell us that what is the jersey number, right? So we see that the domain is now we have Kobe Bryant and Stephen Curry. Meanwhile, for co-domain, we have 24 and 30. As we know, those are the jersey number of the year. So what if now I inverse it? So if I inverse it, can you see that the arrow is going to be opposite, opposite way of the arrow. And one more thing is you're going to realize is the domain is now no longer their name. But now domain is the jersey number. So one more time again, this is the original one and this is going to be the inverse functions. So they tell us that eventually the domain and co-domain is going to interchange. It makes sense, right? Because why? Because after we inverse it, we start our function from here. So of course, here will be our choices. So this will be our domain and this will be our co-domain. And we are using the power of negative one to represent this is a inverse functions. So let us go for a more formal way now. So let's say I have a f of x is equivalent to x plus 1. We have a domain of 1, 2. And of course, we are expecting the result of when we put in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. When I put in 2, plus 1 is equivalent to 3. But what if now I'm curious about the inverse functions? So it means that if I key in 2, the inverse function is going to give me 1. And when I key in 3, the inverse function is supposed to give me 2. So we try to do this one now. We just need to reverse everything here. So again, can you see that? The core domain is now become the domain. And one more thing I want to see that the function is eventually changing. So how can we find the functions? I will teach you all later on. But for now, just remember, the function is going to change as well. Not only the domain and core domain, but the function is also changing. So if, if I put these two things side by side, you can see that the domain 1, 2 is now the core domain of the inverse functions. Same thing, the core domain of the original function is now the domain of the inverse functions. And the arrow is going to be reversed. And one more thing again, the equation is also changing. So this is why when we put in 2, minus 1, if we get me back 1, ah, it's correct. When I put in 3, minus 1, it get, give me 2. Yes, this one is also correct. If I put the original function and the inverse function into a graph, so this is what we have. So I will show to you that which one is the original and which one is the inverse functions. So basically, this one is our original functions and this is our inverse functions. Can you see what are so special about these two things? So if we curious, what is the black line? This line is eventually the line of y is equal to x that we have learned before. So eventually you, you will see that the original and the inverse functions is basically like a mirror. They're going to mirror at the y is equal to x line. It's just a reflection in line y equal to x. So if you don't believe me, we can just connect the a and the image of a. And we can put a 90 degree, eventually they have the same length. So basically it's just a reflection in line is equal to y equal to x. If you don't believe me, until now, you will see the coordinate now. So this is the original one. We have 1, 2. Just to prove that it's a reflection, it will now become 2, 1. Means that the x will become y and the y will become x. 
if you're still not convinced, we see again another point. We have the, we have the point B of 2, 3. And now, they're going to give me 3, 2. Just change the X and the Y, and we have the inverse functions. But to be a, but for a function to have inverse, we must fulfill the requirement. The first requirement is make sure that the relation of a function is only one to one. So why is it? So that when we reverse the error, we we are still going for one to one relations. And one more thing you remember is the domain and co domain. Remember they're going to switch the places. And the one last thing that we're going to know is how can we check it when we have a graph? So let's say you have a graph like this and we have another graph looks something like this maybe. So how can we prove that eventually this function have inverse? So how can we prove it's this horizontal test? So if we cut through, you can see that it's only one point. So this one I can see that this eventually have the inverse functions. Meanwhile, if I cut through this one, it's so obvious that we eventually cut through two points. So these two points tell us that these functions have no inverse. This is how we do the horizontal test. And the one last thing, I remember that I promise you that we're going to find the equations of n inverse functions. So how do we do? We're going to learn it yourself. So look at the first, let first letter of the word. Is L I Y. So we start with L first. L means we're going to let Y is equal to the functions. So it means that Y is now represent the functions, no longer F of X, because we had to write F of X every time. So now we're going to write down as Y is equal to the function. This is where this is what we mean by L. So when we've done our L, the next thing remember, learn it yourself. So next one is I. I means that we're going to interchange the x and y. Why is it? Because we know it's a reflection in line y is equal to x. So now we have y is equal to x plus 1. Let me write it down first. Since we say interchange, it means that y will now become x, x will become y. So these are my new equations. So look it properly. Initially, we have y is equal to x plus 1. Once we do interchange, bam, we will have x equals to y plus 1. So this is what we mean by I. Learn it yourself. So last thing, y. y means that we're going to solve for y. So how to solve for y? Ah, we know the plus 1, move it to the left-hand side. x minus 1 is equals to y. Then we are done. But remember that our subject is y. So this is y. We're going to move it to the left-hand side and say that x minus 1 is our answer. So this is what we mean by L-I-Y. Learn it yourself. But the formal way, remember that? We say that inverse function is going to represent by power of negative 1. So the we'll answer is x minus 1. So we can say that the inverse function of f of x is x minus 1. So this is how we represent it. So that's all for learn it yourself. Let's have a recap now. L means let y is equal to the functions. I means interchange the x and y. And the one last step, remember, solve for y. And that's all for inverse functions. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.